right, welcome to Sunday Night Youth. Hey, we're excited you guys are with us tonight. It's going to be a great night online or in person. Either way, we hope we get to see you. We've got leaders that are going to be here in person. we got leaders that are going to be online. So it's going to be a great night. And uh, yeah, a lot of great information. There's going to be games in here tonight. Remember, when you play the games, you participate in the games, you get points, you get your name put into the drawing. If you win the game, you get your name put in the drawing. If you come on, if you join us for the Zoom, you get your name put in the drawing. If you come in person, you get your name put in the drawing. Lots of ways to get your name in the drawing for the great game system giveaway happening on February 28th. So not too far now. Get as many your names in there as many times as possible. Increase your chances. So, hey, it's going to be a great night. Glad that you're here. Looking forward to the fun. And let's get going now. So, uh, if I had to say how funny I am on a scale of 1 to 10, it's pretty obvious I'm an 11. That's just easy. Um, If I had to guess what kind of animal I'd be, like if I was an animal, I, I think I'd be a giraffe simple like I'm just long but then I've also heard that they could beat up the lion and stuff I don't know if that's true but like don't underestimate me I'll, I'll beat up the lion and then for seeing myself in 10 years I'm gonna be in one of two places I'm either gonna be in the Olympics like professional basketball player and runner at the same time I'm gonna be the first person to do that or I'm gonna be I'm gonna be an athletic trainer for like either a college like college basketball program or or an NBA team which I think would be really fun ah perfect day to go to the pool perfect day for not going to the pool oh if I were only on a tropical island oh to be on a tropical island but what would you do if you were on a tropical island are you really ready Let's test your skills tonight for some points. Last few weeks, you know, Jenny has been talking to us about uh, the project we're doing to share some love with our friends down at the Mayfair Village. And Mayfair Village is a retirement home. And so it's primarily older adults that, uh, because of COVID and uh, just certain uh, regulations, um, are really right now not able to leave their the apartment and are feeling kind of confined. And I, th- I know a lot of them are missing their family, they're missing friends, missing their churches, and uh, so. We want to be able to go and share love with them, and we're collecting all these items to put in these baskets that we're going to give to them uh, around Valentine's Day. But I thought for you guys it'd be good for you to hear from one of the residents. This is one of our friends from Meadow Park, and I wanted you to hear her story a little bit about what it's been like, but also just to hear her story of faith as she lives there at uh, uh, Mayfair Village. This is Girl Wright. I'm a resident here for over a year. I've gone there around 50 years. This is my sixth pastor that we've had since I've been there. It's very, very confining because we cannot go anywhere or have anyone in unless it's to the doctor. And then when we do meet like for lunch or dinner in the dining room, we are one person to a big, big round table and it's six feet apart, so it's kind of hard to communicate. Well, you know, there's no place like home, but they are very kind to me, very loving, very accommodating, and I really believe this is where I'm to be because 
there are people here that need the Lord and there's also some wonderful Christians here and the gal that's right inside the door the receptionist she is dynamic and if I need prayer and come down here she'll pray right with me I feel that there's a great work that needs to be done I know this is where the Lord wants me so I, you know God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His only begotten Son. I can't do less but give whatever I have. Even though I'm old, I still have to give. To give my time, my resources, and my experience I must share. Well, had He lived about three more weeks, we would have been married 70 years. I think we're endangered species, but we knew each other when we were kids through church and also through being about a mile or so away as neighbor. When I was in the condo, I depended on Marv. He did so much for me, and I think he, I know he truly loved me, but now that I'm here at Mayfair, I don't have him. I have to depend on the Lord. He helps me in so many ways, so many ways. I fail to probably esteem him. How could I ever imagine how wonderful he is? But I am so blessed. I know this is where I should be. I know that. I know there's work that I've got to do. I'm Sophie B. I got chosen for Know Your Neighbor this week, and uh, the questions I got were, which would you rather do, do wash the dishes, mow, lawn, mow the lawn, clean the bathroom, or vacuum the house? And I would have to say vacuum the whole house, because that's one, the easiest task, and two, it's just vacuuming. Uh, the second one I got was, what do you love about school? Uh, I love my social studies classes here. It's been really interactive and stuff, even though COVID restrictions. And then my most prized possession is this baby doll that I've had ever since I was really little. And I used to be really clingy to it, and it was like my item. It was like stuffy stuff. And so it was just a big thing that I used to cling to when I was little. So yeah. Last week we started a book of First John and we began talking about this book and, 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 and we went just through the first four verses and it was kind of a brief opening from the writer John. And who is John? John was one of the disciples that walked with Jesus and uh, John is holds the distinction of being the one who the Bible says that Jesus said, he, the one that Jesus loved. Now, what do we know about Jesus? We know that he is love. We know that he loves everyone. We know that he loves them unconditionally. And yet this is the guy that Jesus loved. That means that John is like Superman. He is Superman because he went beyond where everyone else was in God's love. We don't know exactly what that means. But the reality is this guy's going, listen, I lived with God. I lived with Jesus. I walked with him. I ate with him. I touched him. I saw him alive. I saw him die. I saw him risen again and I saw him go to the Father to eternity and the message that he gave to us was that you can join me in eternity. You too can live this life with me eternally if you give your life to him, if you start a relationship with him. And John is saying the whole purpose of this book is that, listen, the only thing greater than living eternity with God is that you would also join me in this eternity with God, that it wouldn't just be something I do alone, but that you would be with me. And so tonight we're going to get into one of the key themes of the book of 1 John, and that's talking about how God is light. So we're just going to get right into it. 
Verse 5 says, this is the message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. Six, if we claim we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. And seven says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Listen, we walk in light when Jesus comes into our life. When we acknowledge the fact that there is sin, that there is this darkness out there, and that we want the light to come into our life, when we invite the light of Jesus into our life, we become the light also that God is. We ask that to come into our life. And he's saying, but if you sit there and say, I have the light in my life, and that there is sin, and you're okay with sin in your life, then maybe you don't have the light. Then maybe you don't understand He goes as far as saying, maybe you're lying, that you really don't have this relationship with him. And he's going, listen, God is light. There's no change in it. You think about the sun. We think about the sun in the sky and the sun is light. There's not like an off switch on it. There's not like another side to it where it's dark. It is just light all the time. All right, scientists. Yes, I know about burned out stars and all that, but just just go with me on this. All right. So the sun is light all the time. Okay. Okay. And he's saying, that's how God is. God is light. There's not darkness in him. There's just who he is. And we can be a part of that when we have this relationship with him. Now, the reality then is also, though, that there is darkness that impacts our life. And so we're going to continue looking at this. And it says in verse 8, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. This is a message for Christians, but this is a message also for the world that God is light. He wants a relationship with all of us. So if you are here tonight and you're on this and and you've never started a relationship with God, he wants a relationship with you. This God of light wants to bring light into your life by, by his son, Jesus, coming into your life. And you do that when you just ask him to come into your life. Believe that he is God. Believe that he wants to live in you. Invite him in and see what he does in your life. That light enters in. But he's also saying, if you have already invited me into your life, the reality is that sin is still a reality in your life. You can't get around it. If you say, God's come into my life, I'm now perfect, guess what? You're fooling each other and you're calling God a liar by making that statement. He's saying that we're still going to wrestle with sin. In our lives here on earth, we are still going to wrestle with sin and Listen, I don't want us to be okay with that. And so he's saying that, you know, basically, how do we remove this? This is something we have to acknowledge. And the good thing is that he says in verse 9, is that we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If sin separates from God, we've got to remove that sin. When we first ask Jesus into our life, we remove that sin that separates us eternally from God but we spend the rest of our lives wrestling with this sin that tries to come back in. And he's saying, we still need to take that step of asking for forgiveness, asking him to remove that sin that separates us from him, that we take that step, that it's an important step that we take, acknowledging it and asking God to remove it. That's something that keeps us, that light shining into our life. When we get comfortable that in that, in our lives, there's a darkness that exists. Um, And so he's saying, fortunately, Jesus is there. I want to hear these things. I want to remove these things from your life. If we continue on, we're going to look at verse 2 and verses uh, 3 through 6. It says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus lived, okay? Who must live as Jesus did. So he's saying that basically the counter to this, sin in our life is a reality. The removing of it is a possibility when we confess those sins to him. But the other is, how do we remain in the light is if we obey his commands. 
Now listen, the two main commands in the Bible are to love God and love others. And the rest of the Bible is breaking that down, helping us to have a greater understanding of what that really means. How do I really love other people? How do I, you know, that doesn't mean just accepting everything. That doesn't mean that I am always happy with everything. It means how do I live this out? I need to look at this and look at God and who he was. And it goes on to say at the very end of this, it says in verse six, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. How did Jesus live his life? Where was Jesus? Who was he hanging out with? Who was he spending time with? What were the things that upset him? You know, we need to know his words so we know the things that break God's heart so they break our heart. We need to know the things that he's passionate about living for so that we're passionate about living for those as well. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, when I think about darkness, there is a darkness in our world that exists right now and it is looking for the light of Jesus. And the light of Jesus shines all the time. But one of the biggest ways that he shines is through us, is through Christians. How are we going to shine in this dark world right now? That's not just accepting everything. That's not just going along with everything. How do I know in his book, in his word, what does it say? And how do I live that out? How am I going to take a stand for the things that matter to God? And, and, and no matter what that means, how am I going to love others? God is looking for us to be light and love in this world right now. He wants a relationship with every single person. There are people out there who, who first of all, that's the number one darkness, that don't have a relationship with him, that don't know him. And he's calling us to invite them to be a part of this. In the same way that John's going, man, eternity's going to be amazing. But the thing missing would be is if you're not with me, that should matter to us. Who out there needs to be a part of this? Who, who, is, who out there in your life do you go, man, if I think about spending eternity, these are the people I'd like to hang out with. Man, what are you going to do to help them be a part of that? You know, when I think about our relationship, you know, with him and I think about this whole uh, thing of darkness, you know, okay, so first of all, God is light, okay? And, and, and there's no change in that. He's just light. We think about the darkness. Now, when does darkness come in? We think about the sun and the sky, it happens, you know, there is still darkness. Like right now, it is dark outside. So how is the sun, this light, how do I live in darkness? It's because something is blocking the light. Now, sin blocks the light from coming into my life. So when I remove those blocks, remove those things that are getting in the way of it, the light is able to shine into my life. But the reality is also there that if I don't spend time in his word, living for him, making sure that the light is in my life, those things that come into my life, the sin in there can sometimes block. I can be that thing that's blocking the light of God from reaching others. So how am I going to live my life in such a way to where I am helping others to find the light? Yes, the light of a relationship with him is the number one thing. How do I point people to Jesus, the love he has for them and the relationship he wants with them? But also, how do I just bring initially the light of God and his love into people's lives? If there's things in this world that aren't okay, that don't, that, that are breaking God's heart, they should break ours. And I need to be upset about them. I need to be making a difference there. But I also need to realize that, you know, even the worst things, if we think about the worst people in this world and the people that you often think, you know, just are terrible and hate, you know, I should hate them and all this stuff. God still loves them. He still wants a relationship with them. He still, when we think about eternity, it's not the same without them there. And it ought to not be the same for us. We ought to still go, we want those people to be a part of it. We want to invite them to be a part of this. How do I love unlovable people? And that's everything from just people that are annoying to people that are downright nasty. People that are horrible people. God loves them. How do I find a way to love them and love them to the light? How do I help them to find the light? John is welcoming us on an amazing ride into an amazing relationship. And I hope that you guys are catching this. I hope that you're beginning to understand this. This is going to be an amazing ride through this book and continue joining us each week. Tonight on online, we're going to be going to Zoom. So I encourage you guys to check into the Zoom if you're in person tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about this in our groups, some uh, smaller groups. So, um, hey, we're excited. We're all apart together tonight. Look forward to the day when we're all in person together. But, hey, love you guys. Whether you're joining us Sunday night, another part of the week, 
Uh, glad that you're here. And uh, just let's just ask God right now uh, as we close out this time just to, just to fill us in, in this spot. God, thanks for this day. Thanks for this night. I thank you for your word. God, I pray that you would help us to uh, desire that light of to be in our life, your light to be in our life. God, I pray that you'd help us to identify the things that get in the way of that light shining. And God, I pray that you would help us to identify those places where your light needs to shine and you're calling us to be the one shining it there. Help each of us to understand that, acknowledge it, and to be who you want us to be. We love you. your name we pray. Amen. All right, well, thank you for being here tonight, you guys. Hey, I hope you heard the, the story, Verla's story, amazing lady. And I hope you're excited about the ways that we can give to some of these residents at Mayfair. And I also hope that, you know, you're uh, thinking about this, this book of 1 John and, and just what it means for us to be light. So just want to encourage you to continue thinking about that. How can you be light? How can you be love? And if you don't have the ultimate light and love of God in your life, man, that's just some questions you got talk to me about that. You can uh, call me at the church. You can uh, email me, text me. I uh, would love to hear from you. And I hope you have a great night. Hey, join us on the Zoom right now. Remember, you get your name entered in the drawing. And I know they'd love to see you on there. And so, hey, have a great week. And we'll see you next week.